Hey, this is Tim here. I hope you're keeping well. Um, this is going to be the first of a, a series of videos on AutoCAD. Um, I'm primarily a SolarWorks guy myself, and um, uh, you know I've used AutoCAD for years now. And uh, to be quite honest, uh, it's something I've wanted to do for a while, and uh, I'm finally getting around to it. Um, I have quite a few students, um, drafting students, that are having trouble with AutoCAD. So this video is for them, and uh, I hope it helps you. So the plan, uh, I'm, I'm planning on having about 15 videos on AutoCAD that starts from the very, very basics, uh, that goes on up to more advanced um, parts and things like that. I'm going to be using this um, set of drawings. I have 30 um, examples in here, ranging from really simple stuff all the way up to complex stuff and uh, i'm going to we're going to spend the next uh, 15 lessons going through them i'm planning on having two parts per lesson if i get lazy it'll just be one part per lesson we'll, we'll play it by ear um with this first video i just want to talk a little bit about how um <coughs> excuse me i want to talk a little bit about how autocad is still very much relevant in 2017 um you know this is uh i'm i'm quite sure of this and i'm going to i can kind of prove it to you i'm going to show you how to install autocad and um and then we're going to just go right in we're going to create this first part and i'll show you how to do it so uh the first thing i want to show you is um i'm going to show you something called craigslist now you don't have to live in baltimore for this to make sense um i'm just going to show you an example Craigslist, here we are. And I'm going to go to um, Baltimore. Where's here? It's Baltimore. Okay, that's the, the main city near where I live. And I'm going to type in SolidWorks. Now, SolidWorks is kind of the, the, the Corvette or the, the Ferrari of, of mechanical drafting. Um, the equivalent, or, or a, I don't know what the right word is, but AutoCAD would be, I would consider AutoCAD being a, a pickup truck. So, um, my dog is just biting the electrical cable of my laptop, so just hold on for one second. Ollie! Ollie! Stop! Come over here. Stop. Come over here. Stop that. Anyway, um, I'm, there he is. Fine. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit SolarWorks. No, that's not what we want. We want to go here to Jobs and SolidWorks. And let's see how many jobs there are in SolidWorks. So, not too many. Right, I'm going to type in AutoCAD. So there's about, I'd say there's about three of, there, I, I'm going all the way down. There, there's lots of jobs in AutoCAD. So what, what am I trying to say? Even though AutoCAD is, um, it's not as sophisticated, it's not as, I don't think it's as good as a program as SolarWorks. However, it is, it, it is, it is more, um, it's used in so many different industries. Okay, it's used in civil, it's used in designing buildings, mechanical drafting, uh, if you're doing any sort of water plants, um, it's everywhere, architectural, uh, if you're remodeling your house, um, you know, I'm trying to install a new kitchen now, I have no money for it, but I'm trying to install a new kitchen, and I'm drawing it up in AutoCAD, so um, at my advice for you is if you're a, a Revit person, or you're um, a, a SolarWorks, you should definitely know you should be decent enough at AutoCAD as well. It's it's still very, very relevant and it's still very, very common. Wherever you live in the United States, wherever you live in the world, load up your equivalent of Craigslist, type in AutoCAD versus whatever drafting package you think you want to learn, and you will see that it is very, very much still in demand. So I hope that makes sense. Okay. So the, the next thing I want to show you is uh, how are we going to install um, AutoCAD. If you're a student, if you're a student, um, a drafting student, hold on, my dog is, what is he doing? I just got a new puppy, will you? Stop messing, with you? All right. Um, if you're, if you're a drafting student or you're an engineering student or an architectural student, you should have no trouble getting AutoCAD. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to type in Autodesk Education. And I want you to click on this first link. 
All right. Um, now, I have an account, and if you're having problems with this, I, I have a feeling you should have no problem. Um, there you go. Stu students, teachers, academic institutions worldwide eligible for free access to Autodesk software. That's all of it. Okay, so I'm just going to click here, and um, what we want is AutoCAD here. I have an account. There we go. I'm going to sign in, and you're going to create an account if you need. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause this really quickly and uh, put in my password so I don't want anyone, any of you guys stealing my password. So you're going to have to either create an account or sign in, and I'll be back. So all I had to do was just throw in my username and password, and here we are, download AutoCAD. Um, just on a side note, um, I haven't messed around with Fusion 360 a whole lot. I don't want to go off on a tangent now, but um, it is, it's 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 free. It's it's just as good. Um, I, I would. I'm, I'm about to say it's just as good as SolidWorks. It's very very close. I think if you're designing massive assemblies, that's a different story. But you know, if you get round to it, you want to look at Fusion 360. Anyway, so let, let's let's stay focused, Tim, and let's let's uh, keep on with AutoCAD. I'm going to download the. I'm going to download the the newest version. I have a 64-bit computer, and it's going to be English. And I'm just going to install now. I'm going to click on this link. My dog, his puppy, he's, he's pulling the curtains down right beside the door. I, I better let him out. He probably just go to the bathroom or something. Anyway, look, uh, I'm going to let this install. And, uh, and I'll be back in a second. All right, relax, will you? All right, so what I'm going to do now is that it, uh, it's, it's asking me what, what should I do. I'm just going to click on install on this computer. Honestly, um, I'm all I'm really interested in is Autodesk AutoCAD 2017. I'm going to turn these guys off. Um, I do you know I don't know what they're for. Um, I wouldn't waste your time with them. We just want AutoCAD 2017. I'm going to put this on um, my D drive. Uh, Ollie, stop, will you? Autodesk. AutoCAD. I go install. That should be it. Um, so hopefully you guys don't have too much pr uh, trouble installing AutoCAD. I find it to be quite easy compared to SolidWorks. Uh, it is it is quite easy. Um, I'm not sure if you need a .edu um, web address in order to do that. Um, but let's check here really quickly. Um, do I need uh, edu address address for AutoCAD? I'm not sure. Who is eligible for? I think I think anyone can download this. To be quite honest with you, okay. Um, it took me about five minutes to install uh, AutoCAD. It, it was very very quick. It copies the i the logo icon to the desktop. And uh, I'm after double clicking it, and uh, I'm, so it's running it now. Uh, hopefully, when you um, double click on it and, and it opens up for the first time, you're seeing something very, very similar to what I what I have on my screen. So, uh, kind of, if you've never um, uh, watched a video of mine, uh, I kind of teach by doing examples. I'd rather not talk about um, uh, the different functionality of AutoCAD. I'd rather just create a drawing and, and and introduce the concept as we go through the drawing so the first draw we want to do is we want to create this very very simple uh this is called a multi-view drawing and we have this is the front view this is the top view and this is the right hand side view so uh, we're not going to bother with this this is called an isometric here which kind of is a, a kind of is a 3d representation of this object we're not going to worry about drawing these just yet 
all I want to do is create these three views okay <laughs> so typically in mechanical drawings or architectural they will you will have uh, you will break up um, uh, you'll have a three-dimensional object and what you'll do is you'll create 2d views of this 3d object typically from three sides front top and side and notice how they all kind of correspond to each other this line has a brother which this this is his, his corresponding line is this line this line here this bottom line the corresponding line is this line on this view and so on so you we'll talk about that a little bit later so i'm going to be going back and forth here um so i'm going to kind of hopefully that won't be too too much of a pain if i was in your shoes i would print out this sheet uh these these 23 pages and it's going to be much easier you can have it in front of you uh, so i'm going to click on new and hopefully this loads up in front of you this templates now um i i don't want to get, get in too deep here but if you're in america you're going to click on this just a cad okay if you're anywhere else in the world you're going to click on a cad iso what's the difference whenever you click on a cad if i draw a line with a dimension of one it's going to be that line the length of it is going to be one inch in europe or mongolia or argentina or wherever you're drawing it if you double click on this and you draw a line length of 10 that's going to be 10 centimeters okay so let's we're in the united states it doesn't i, I think for the first few examples wherever you are just double click on this a cad and this opens up all right now a couple of things this is can i see right let's start with this this is the origin that's zero zero on that's zero zero that's important okay this business up here is called a ribbon and and when i first started using autocad i found all of this information very very um what would you call it scary um but after a while you'll get used to it okay down here is the command line and the command line is a way that you can communicate you can give commands to autocad and whenever you look i'll, I'll give you an example if i want to if i click on circle okay right away here autocad is telling me something it's saying fair enough if you want to draw a circle you got to give me the center point first that's all it's saying so this is our kind of communication okay so we'll talk we'll, we'll talk about that later i'm going to press escape to get out of the command okay so i'm pressing escape to get out of the command um i can click on here and i this first one is the grid and what it will do is it will turn that off and on i like that okay now so the first thing we want to do is um i don't know if you've ever if you've ever um done any pencil and paper drafting that's how I first started drafting. And we have two types of pencils. You have a pencil that has a very, very dark, heavy line. And then you have a pencil like a 6H, or it's very, very, a hard pencil. But whenever you draw, the lines are very, very light. Okay? And we used to call that like construction lines. Now, what I'm going to do is let's pretend that this point here is the origin. I'm going to draw a lovely, a big, long construction line in this direction. And I'm going to draw a big line construction line in that. Now, let me see if I can remember how to do that. The first thing I'm going to do is I'd like, I'd like those lines to be on a different layer. Now, how, would I, I'm, I'm, how do I explain layers? I'm just going to do it, okay? And you're going to see what it does. That's, that's the best way I can say it, all right? Now, as of now, you can see here in this ribbon, we have these layers, okay i'm going to click on layer properties and we have one layer at the moment and it's layer zero whatever line i draw on layer zero is always going to be white okay i'm going to i'm right clicking around here and i'm anywhere around here i'm going to click a new layer and i'm going to call this c o n s t one construction one and my color of choice is always this yellow lad throughout the years okay so what do i do i've created a new construction layer the light bulbs are whether it's on or off get back into that in a second and i like the yellow 
once I'm done with that, I'm going to hit this X here to close out. Now, notice if I draw whatever I draw here, blah, 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 it's all white. Okay, it's all white. Okay, why? Because we're on the zero layer. Now, if I want to highlight this, this is a relatively new thing, or maybe it's not, but it's new for me. If I want to highlight all of this, I click and let go, and I click. Now, before, you would you would have clicked it and held it down, but you get this mad, funky selection gizmo that I don't really like, but I'm sure there's people that like it. Anyway, I click, I let go, I click, and it highlights everything, and what do I do? I press the delete key, and now it's gone. All right? So, I come up here. I'm going to click on Construction 1. Now, what do you think color? If I draw whatever now, notice that it's it's yellow. All right? So I click, I let go, I delete. Are you going to let me do it? Let's try it again. Click, let go, delete. Now, I'm going to I'm going to come over here to draw, and this is this is a ribbon here. I think that's what they call a ribbon. I'm going to drop down this draw, and I don't really want to line. Watch this. It's this icon right here. It's called construction line. Creates a line of infinite length. This bad boy is very, very useful. All right. Now, it would be nice if it would be nice um, if I could lock into this. This is where my origin is. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try. I'm going to try something here. Is that going to lock on there now? Okay. What happens if I do this one here? Ortho. That's not going to do it. Okay, so I know what I need to do. I'm going to go to construction line, and let's read what the command line is telling us. It's saying, specify a point. Okay, it basically is saying, all right, man, if you want to have the construction line put in, you got to tell us what the, the, the first point is. Okay, and I'm going to put this at 0, comma 0. So I type in 0, comma 0, and I'm going to press enter. And look at that. Okay, so the point, this construction line is locked onto the origin, and I can spin this around. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight one of these buttons here. I'm going to click on this. It, it's called polar tracking. Is that going to help me? And notice what it does is when it go when it gets to the horizontal, it locks. When it gets to the vertical, it locks. What is that called? That's called polar. What is what do they call it? Polar tracking. I like that. So I'm going to click. Okay, and that's nice. It lets me do it again. I'm going to swing this around and click. And what am I going to do now? I'm going to press escape. So what have I just done there? I've created my first ever construction line. Okay. Now, um, the distance from that line that we're going to, we have a construction line going all the way up. The distance from that construction line over to here is 5.13, okay? And one of the things I like to do is I use this command called offset. So I like I like offset. Um, let me let me just show you what it does, okay? So I need I need you to pay attention to this. I don't know if this is called a status bar down the bottom here. Um, there's a lot of useful uh, trickery going on here that we can use. The first one is this grid mode that we could turn off and on. I will, I'll get back to offset now in a second. I, I'm not trying not to go on a tangent. Stop, snap mode. Let me just see what snap mode does. If I draw a line, does it actually snap? It's not really doing much. Okay, that's good. I, I, let's, not, let's not worry about snap mode for the time being. Ortho mode we'll talk about in a second. And this polar tracking. Okay. Now, the fact is, you can see, is polar tracking on or off? It's on because it's colored in. Let me just let me just do that again. It snaps to a horizontal, snaps to the vertical, snaps to the horizontal, snaps to the vertical. We like if I turn that off, it doesn't do it, but I can turn it back on and it does it. Now, um, isometric grafting. Forget about that for the time being. The next one we want to do is it says snap cursor to two D reference points. Okay. Sounds very, very complicated. That's, as of now, that's turned off, okay? I'm going to show you what, why it's useful. I'm going to draw a line, 
and I would like my cursor to kind of snap to that center point which it's not with, 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 which it's not if I turn this on here and you can also click this arrow here you can see all of these different things we'll get into this later but look the, the ones we want on now endpoint center intersection extension they're the ones I want turned on you can just click them on and click them off as need, needed now what I'll do is I'm going to get a line and you can see right there it snaps to it watch this I'm going to draw a line okay I'm going to press escape I'm going to turn this off this snap business that we like I'm going to get a line going and look it doesn't lock into it what a pain but look I turn this on and now bang you see that what's that called I always call that snap and that's a very used we like that I go snap and I go snap okay so as of now the two things that I want you to use three things I'm lying I like this grid the grid is good I like this polar tracking we like that I like the object snap those three things you're allowed don't worry about the rest you can do a lot of damage with those three things I'm going to click on offset okay and we go down to our command line and it says offset specify offset distance now I'm going to pick a number I'm just going to make it one one inch select object to offset all right and I've, I've selected one line now it would be nice if it selected the whole thing multiple I'd have to click M for multiple okay and what it can do is it can it'll offset it'll take whatever you've drawn and it will just it will position it it will copy it the line the distance of whatever you specified okay and you can it, of course it can go in either direction so I, I have a feeling I'm confusing you I'm going to click here I'm going to let go I'm going to click there and hit the delete key what we're going to do is we're going to offset this a distance of 5.13 okay so I click on offset specify offset distance 5.13 and I press enter and it says right great which object would you like to offset I'm going to click this line and then it says I can either move it to this I'm not moving it I'm copying it to this side or this side I'm just going to go this side here and what am I doing here now I'm I'm, I'm pushing the and I have a mouse I have two buttons on it and I have a roller ball right in the middle or roller gizmo and what I'm doing is I'm pushing it towards and I'm zooming in and I'm pulling it out and I'm zooming out I'm pushing it in and I'm zooming in I hold it down it turns into a hand and I'm panning do you see that so practice that let's go back here for one second the distance from this line up to here is 3.5 so what do I do I go back to offset I type in 3.5 I'm, I'm, I'm bloody not paying attention here. let me take it 3.5 I press enter I click the horizontal line are we going to move it down we're going to move it up in this direction and this is the space that we're going to put that front view now uh, typically in drawings you're not going to have a space between this line and here okay but you can see we need room for these dimensions these lines these these numbers let's pick a number let's make this three inches from that line to there and we're going to do another construction line and you're saying this is what what a pain why can't we just draw start drawing this in what what we're trying to do is we're just trying to give ourselves room for these views all right you'll see later i'm going to go offset i'm going to give myself three inches specify offset distance three inches enter i click the line i bring it over here and let's go back and then what's the distance from here to here i don't see any number there this distance from there to there is the same as this distance from there to there which is two what are what is what are these three views called they're called orthographic projections that's too hard for you I like multi view multi view uh, drawings okay or orthographic projections so I'm going to go back here 
I'm going to go offset two from there to there. Lovely. And I'm going to I'm, I'm going to do we'll do the same space again, three inches. So I'm going to go offset three enter click there to there uh, offset again two and I'm going to click from there to there now what goes in this space this real estate the front view what goes in this real estate the side view what goes in this real estate the top view all right so I've laid out my construction lines all right I go back to view zero to, to layer zero do you see this whatever I draw now is white beautiful I click there notice that I'm getting a blue box and I click here and I get and I hit the delete key all right let's go back here now for a second excuse me I'm gonna draw this bottom line let's just start with that no let's let's start with the bottom line and then I can easily draw this in I can easily draw this in so I'm gonna get a line what does it say specify first point when you highlight I'm not clicking anything I'm just dragging this over and I'm highlighting this point do you, does it snap if it doesn't snap you got to turn this on and make sure this is blue or whatever color it's set for. If that still doesn't work, you got to come in here and make sure endpoint, center, intersection, and extension are all checked. So let's do that again. I'm pressing escape a few times. Line. I click there and I make sure I get that snap. And I get there and I make sure I get that snap. Do you see this? And then I come over here to rectangle. And it's a specify first point. I get a snap there. I come all the way over here and I get a snap. I'm zooming out, I'm zooming back in. I get a snap here and I get a snap there. Okay. So slow down here now for a sec. Right, we got that. I feel like what I want to do is I want to draw this circle in. So before I do that, I need a line a construction line that comes up 1.5 from the bottom and 2.88 from the side are you going to remember those so i go we got to we got to swap over to the construction one i go offset and i bloody forgot already 1.5 specify offset dis distance 1.5 i click there i drag it up and then i go offset it's beside array 2.88 enter i click the line and i i can bring it over in either direction what we want it here now tell me what what is this point here the significance of this point that is where the center of the circle is going to go now we want that to be white so we change over to the layers i click on circle and it's a specified center point now before we go on it then let's look and see what this is this is the symbol for diameter so the diameter is the distance from there to there the diameter is two times the radius which is the distance from the center out to the edge 1.52 all right I click circle it says all right if you want a circle give me the center point that's your center point and then it asks specify the radius of circle or the diameter if I put in a number here, it's going to take it as the radius. Now, if you're good in your head, you can divide 1.52 divided by 2. It's Sunday morning. I'm tired. I'm going to hit D for diameter. And I'm going to give it the diameter. You have to hit D, enter first. And now it's a specified diameter of the circle. What are we going to put in? 1.52. Well, now we're laughing. Okay. All right. What's the next thing we want to draw I'm going to come up here 2.5 and then I'm going to come up here 2.25 I'm going to show you a nice easy way of doing that let's just remember 2.5 okay I'm going to draw a line and I'm going to lock on there 
and I'm going to kind of tell it. Um, I'm going to I'm going to kind of help it first. I have this polar turned on, and I'm going to snap to this. I'm not I'm not clicking anything. I'm just bringing it over, and it locks into that ninety degree. And you can see there, right in the middle of my screen, I, I'm, I'm pointing with my finger here, but you can't see that. As you can see, 2.0895. I'm just going to put in 2.5. Look at that. Lovely. And you can see there's where the line goes. And I'm going to do the same over here. Now watch this. If you don't pay attention and you don't get that locked on there, and I put in 2.25, so it's not right. You have to lock that in first. Let's do it. I click here, I click line, I click origin. I kind of, I'm not clicking anything right now, I'm just, I'm moving the mouse until it lines up. And what is this going to be? Whatever I put in here, it's going to take that as its um, length, 2.25. Okay, lovely. Now, um, I'm going to uh, let me think here for a sec. I'm going to do I, I'm going to use a construction line and I'm going to get an offset construction line of 1.63 and you'll see why. So I go back to construction, I hit offset, I go 1.63 is the distance. I click this line and I bring this over. Now, at this point, this the intersection of these two lines is important because we need to draw a line from that point all the way over. And I'll just do that really quick. I'll just go zero. I'm changing layers. I'm going to show you something here while, I'm, while, my, while my brain has it, okay? And I was able to draw that line in. If what, what layer are we on now? We're on layer zero. Whatever we draw is going to be white, and it belongs to that layer zero. If I click this um, drop down menu and I turn off the the light bulb, look what happens. I, I deleted, no, I didn't delete, I turned off the visibility of my construction layer. And now I just see the goods. Now, I'd like to turn off this, um, uh, this, this it's called a user or not. They might call it a world coordinate system. I'm going to right click on this and I should be able to go into use user coordinate system icon setting and then I can turn this off show and it's gone it's kind of getting in the way if you want to turn it back on I type in UCS and I might have to do I what do I need to do can I do I might have to type in UCS on let's see is it did I, did I lose it no, so I just turned it off. Is it? Is it? Can I right click there? Ah, yeah, there it is now. Right click. Let's just get rid of it, okay? It's down there in the corner. It's it's not bothering anyone. So tell me, how do I get our our um, construction layer turned back on? I come back in here. I hit the the light bulb, and now it's back. Okay. So just give me a second. I'm going to get a cup of tea. All right, I'm back. Um, what's next? So my, I've, I want to put in this 45 degree. And I need to, I'm going to have to think about that. 45 degrees there, an angular line, yeah. Um, so let's, that, that's going to be a little bit tricky. And the end point is right here. We need to have a 45 degrees. There's a couple of different ways of doing that. I'm going to give my first way a blast. So I, draw, I click on line. And, ah, yeah, yeah, here we go. Um, um, you're making me think now. 180 minus 45 is 135. So what I'm going to do, um, now, it needs, it needs, a, okay, what we're going to do this. We're going to draw this line up here, somewhere around here. Ah, let's see, no, here, okay, let's see. It. I would do this a different way, but there's pro. let me see if I can try this again. I click here. Now, if I press the tab key, very good. Now I can change that angle, and that angle is 135. Ah, yes, yeah, see, okay. So i, I got to do this again. Let's hit delete. I hit line. This is my starting point. I'm going to move this over here somewhere. I'm going to give it a nice length. 
I'm pu pushing it past the um, the construction line. I'm hitting the tab key, and I can change that to be one three five. And you're saying, well, where the hell is one three five? Okay, let me show you. Um, and then I'm going to just com complete this. I'm going to lock on there to there. Now, hopefully, I haven't I haven't blown the head off you too much. Um, if I draw a, a horizontal line, the angle from this guy all the way to there is what? Come on, you know that's 90 degrees. The angle from here all the way around to there is what? We drew it as 135. What does that mean? That means this lad from there to there is 45. And that's what we wanted, 45 degrees. Um, that's one way. I like that way. The way I would, I would have done it before is, and I'm going to delete this as well, is I'm going to draw a construction line. So, oh, my dog is crying upstairs. He's in his crate. Um, I'm going to get a construction line. I'm going to type in, look down here, specify a point or horizontal, vertical, or angular, or bisect. I hit A for angular. Enter the angle of construction line. I'm going to put this as 45, and let's see what happens. Now, two things are happening. It's drawing my construction line as white because it's on the zero layer, and you can see there we're in the wrong direction. So let's try that again. I'm going to change this to be construction. I'm going to um, get my construction line. I'm going to type in A for angular. What do you think I'm going to put in here? My brain is saying minus 45. Uh, now we're cooking. I'm going to lock it in here. And that's one way. I'm going to get a line from here to there to there and once i have that look i'm going to delete that construction line i don't need that one line anymore because i'm after completing this um shape i'm going to go back to here and we have all of this does anyone hopefully you have some idea why that line is there if we look at this from the right hand side we have a change we have this flat face and then it starts turning into an angular face that line represents represents that Whenever you have a point here, we should have a, a, a corresponding line over here. I'm going to let my dog out. Hold on. I'll be back in one sec. So, sorry about that. Um, so this line corresponds to that point. And this line at the top corresponds to that this changing angular horizontal, this point. And this point corresponds to that line. So why am I telling you all this? What I'm going to do, you can see here, we have a line here already. So I can pretty much, wherever this, whatever, Ollie, will you give me a break, will you? Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to get myself a construction line. All right. From this point, I'm bring this up. And I'm going to do the same over here. I'm come on now. Construction line from there over. And what do I do? Now so I have I'm after um what's the right word? Projecting all these construction lines from these points over to the other views. What I'm gonna do now is I'm on layer zero and I'm just gonna complete these uh, uh I'm gonna go from one point to another. I'm pressing escape. I'm going click, click, escape, click, one there, one there, and escape. And I'm making sure I'm using those, very much using those snap. Okay. So what do I want to do next? Um, okay. Um, then I'm going to add my dimensions on later, but I want to show you this. Does it, do you have any idea what this, this is a dash line and this is a dash line. And same up here. What this represents, it's telling me, or it's telling you, that this hole here, this this circle, goes all the way through the part. It's a true hole. And if I go to the very, very 12 o'clock quadrant, all the way across, 
that should give me the position of those lines and I'll show you so I go back to construction I go um, construction line this is what I want I want that this, these that's these four points are called called quadrants and I have a nice intersection there I have my polar turned on so it gives me the horizontal I'll do that again click click escape and now I'm going to bring it up project them up to the top view click click escape now hopefully your head isn't too melted but there's going to be some dash lines going there uh, in drafting whenever we see a dash line what does that represent it represents something behind so this line here this main line we you would see all of those but these dash lines are telling us that there's something inside of the part or behind the view okay so how do i okay let me show you i'm going to go to zero i'm going to get myself a line and i click it is that what we want do we want to do we want a solid line there no so i go back into layer properties i right click here new layer and what do we call it we're going to call it hidden one right and we like the color to be white but the line type do we want the line type to be continuous not so much so you double click in here and right now we have only one type of line type loaded in i'm going to click on don't ask me why they don't have the range and loaded in there's probably a good reason i don't know but i'm going to hit load and we and look at all this we well why was there so many lines i'm going to keep keep on going and i see hidden lovely that's what i want and i go okay and look while i'm here i might as well do load drop this down and i'm going to have a center i'm going to talk about that later so i've, I've my two types of lines three types of lines center continuous and hidden i'm going to click on hidden and i'm going to go okay if i now right right now i'm going to check whatever whatever it shows here at the top that's my current layer and i'm going to go on the hidden layer whatever i draw here is going to have lovely looking um dash lines all right so what do i do i go from this point over and I go from this point over and you'll see when I turn off the construction layer whether it looks and then I'm going to come all the way over here and I'm planning to do that and I'm going to go from here to there and there to there all right now um let's go back the last type of line that we're missing here is this these, these are center lines now we have a nice set of center lines here and we've got center lines there and center lines there. So how do we do that? Um, I'm trying to think here. There should be, um, is there a mark here? No, no, we don't want that. Dimension, linear, jog, where are you? Annotate, center mark, there you go. Now we're cooking. All right, what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna click on center mark. I'm just gonna make sure I'm on the right, I'm on hidden. I'm gonna go back to um, I'm going to create a new layer and what are we going to do we're going to call this uh, center line or just center I need to change the line type I'm going to change that to be center and if I if I double click on this you can see here this check marks mean that's the current layer if I double click on that look at this now I'm after saying the current the, the current layer is center and that's it up there I'm going to go all the way over to annotate center mark and what does it say it's a select circle i'm going to click this circle i know that beautiful beautiful and then i'm going to click on center line and it's a select first line if i select here and i select there ah, that's too easy and then i'm going to go here i'm going to select look i'm going to turn off my construction line it's going to make it a bit easier to see what's going on look at that um, sorry annotate now I'm moving a bit fast here uh, this is called a ribbon and you can click on these tabs and what it does is if you think this was bad enough here with all this this madness going on you can click each one of these and it gives you a whole uh, 
it gives you a whole load of new information but don't worry uh, over the next 15 or how many lessons i'm gonna i'm gonna we'll, we'll, we'll conquer it i'm gonna click on center line and it says select first line i'll select this and i'll select the second line and i'll select that and look what it does it puts a nice center line in in there so now you know we've been at this for about 45 minutes and we're starting to make a bit of progress um i'm going to go back to home i'm going to click on layer properties i'm going to go new layer and i want the last one of the day is going to be dimension d-i-m-e-n and I, I don't want a center line type it's going to be continuous that's the the main one we're going to use and I'm going to make my dimensions look. I like this blue for some reason. I've always this is just the way I've been doing it for a long time. Um, so the dimension color is going to be blue. All right. And I need to. I should have double clicked on it, but now my current layer is going to be dimensions. So hopefully at this stage you kind of see the point of layers without me giving you a good explanation of what they can do. But we can. It they're very very useful in setting up. Uh, geometry and we can have a layer for dimensions if we want to turn it off or on and so on so what do i do let's go back here and let's look at this top view and let's put in this dimension of two all right so i'm going to click on dimension i'm going to click the first i make sure that i have my old object snap on i'm going to click the first point i'm going to click the second point and i'm going to just zoom in here and, and, and the third point is where it gets um placed and notice I have a precision of four decimals places, 2.0000, overkill. Um, should I fix that now or later? Let's see if we can fix that now. So how do I do it? Um, I'll show you. I'm going to click, drop this annotation down. I'm going to click this, this second button here, which is the dimension style. And look what it does. It brings up all this madness, more craziness that you need to remember. Dimension style manager. I go into modify and can I see any anything that talks about precision there anywhere I can't basically if you want to change the dimensions and there's a lot you can change this is where you would do it I'm going to go into primary units and there it is I'm guessing it's this one here precision right there I'm going to change this to be 0 0.00 and I'm going to go OK and I'm going to go close now, if you can't change, that's not the end of the world. Four units of precision, so it's okay for the time being. Where was that again? I'll show you. It's annotation, this second bad boy, dimension style, modify, primary units. So whatever you want to change in dimensions, you look, you have all this madness to change. Don't worry. We'll get, we'll get deeper into that. Now, let's go back and we see we have quite a few dimensions here. My dog is starting to chew the carpet. Hold on for Ollie! Stop, Ollie. I have this Persian rug here that he's 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 he's, he's pulling the pulling the crap out of it. Alright, so what we'll do is I'll get dimension. I'm gonna go now whenever you're dimensioning an Ollie, Ollie! Stop! You little bollocks. Whenever you when you put ever put dimensions on an object. The smaller dimensions go closer to the object. So I click this point. I'm watching you. I click this point, and I'm going to drag this up. 1.63. This is called an aligned dimension. We want a horizontal, so I kind of have to move this up like so. Beautiful. We got that one in. And then I'm going to go dimension. I'm going to go from this point to the center. Lovely. That's not what we want. This is good. Okay. I'm panning. The bigger dimension goes to the outside. I'm going to put in a dimension from there to there. What is he doing? All right. I'm going to put this 5.13 in there. Like so. He thinks I'm talking to him. And um, what's what are we missing here? Uh, we're missing a couple there. So I'm clicking the I click the dimension, I click the points. Let's just put this in here. 1.5, 2.5. 
from there to there 3.5 lovely um what else do we need we need this dimension here look oh, oh look at this i can just click the line that's new oh that's easy you can see i haven't used autocad in a while i'm going to go down here to linear and i'm going to go diameter i click the circle beautiful okay diameter 1.52 in Europe and in the United States, we have different ways of dimensioning. This type of dimension here and this type of leader and so on, this is all controlled by ANSI. What's that? American National Standards Institute. In Europe, Mongolia, everywhere else, they use ISO. Now, my European friends are probably looking at these dimensions going, God, they're ugly. But that's an, I look at it the other way around. When I see ISO dimensions, I think they're ugly. Uh, this is how we dimension in the United States, okay? So if you had clicked on ACAD ISO, your dimensions would look a little bit different. This is These are just how we dimension things, okay? So let's go back and let's make sure we're not missing. Are we missing anything? Um, I feel like we're missing, that we need a dimension from this edge to the center, and we need this angle here, and we should be laughing then. No, we got the 2.88. I'm going to put this dimension in from there to there. No, no let me do that now. Let's, let's delete this. That point to this point here. Okay, now what's the last thing? We need this angular. So if I go down here and I go angular dimension, I click here and then I click here and look at this. There's my 45, okay? Like so, beautiful. So basically, um, let's say you're saying, look, Tim, I can't see those dark blue dimensions. Ollie, will you try not to wreck the house, will you? Let's say I can't see those black dimensions or those dark navy blue dimensions. We can come in here to layer properties. I can click on this blue here and I can change that to cyan. Now we're cooking, all right? The last thing I'm going to show you is, and, and if you've gotten this far and you haven't given up, well done. I'm going to create text, multi-line text. I'm going to click one point there, another point there. And what I would get you to do is I'd get you to type in your name. I would get you to type in AutoCAD Drawing 1. And what I can do is I can highlight all of that and I can change its size, its height. So I'm going to... I'm going to make this 0.3 and press enter, and it does nothing. Now, why is it being a pain? No, I'm going to, I'll figure it out. I'm going to make it bold. Is it going to change it to bold? Very nice. Ah, there we go. I had to, I had to select it. Okay. Do you want to save your text changes? Yes. I'm going to get a box. And I'm just putting a box around this for the time being. And you're probably, some of you are probably saying, well, Tim, why don't you show us how to make a title block? That's for another day. Okay. So we have this. And let's say we want to print it out. Let's say you want to submit your homework. How would you do it? You're going to go up here. You're going to hit save. Let, let's save this first of all. I want you to, the, the, the file extension for an AutoCAD drawing is a DWG. Okay, what are the file, what, when, hopefully you know what a file extension is. What are other file, examples of file extensions? .pdf, .doc, .jpeg, .html. The AutoCAD file extension, .dwg. I go file, save as, desktop, Tim's, uh, let's go, AutoCAD, drawing, one. Now, let me just show you this. You can the nice thing with AutoCAD is you can save these as an AutoCAD 2013 in AutoCAD. Let's say you have a cousin in in Virginia and you want to you want to transmit your work to them. And let's say for whatever reason they have AutoCAD 2000 installed. And you're after doing your drawing in AutoCAD 2017. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to save this as an older file format in order to transmit it, in order for them to open it up. So what's nice about this, and I'm going to use this word, and it's probably not the right word, but it's retroactive. Now, the things with Inventor and um, SolarWorks is they don't allow you to do that, which is a pain. 
Okay, so if you're trans transmitting it to older uh, AutoCAD files to your friends that might have older ones, you might have to save this as an older version. I'm going to save this to 2013 and just hit save. The other thing I would definitely recommend is if you do not have a Dropbox account, do yourself a favor and get a Dropbox account. It's very, very useful. The last thing I want to show you is I want to show you how to print this out. So if let's say you want to print this out. I'm going to go up to the A. I'm going to go to print. You're going to, right here, hopefully you have a, a printer installed in your house. I have a brother, HL2140, that I can click on. You can also save this as a PDF. You want to change that. The paper size is going to be letter. If you have an 11 by 17 or you have a larger plotter, you're going to change that here. But in America, we use this the paper size letter. In Europe, you guys use A4. That's your equivalent. What to plot? What I like to do is I like to do window or extents. I can click on window. And what does it do? I want to click from there over to there. And that's my print window, like so. I want to fit to a paper. And all I need to do is just hit OK. I'm going to hit preview and actually show you what it's going to look like. And that doesn't look too bad. For, for you've spent an hour and a quarter and you're after drawing something like you're after drawing a very very basic shape with a very very basic title block very very basic dimensions and all the line types but the reality is you, you, you really have everything you need so what did we cover today we covered the basic how to install it remember what what's this business called down here this is the command line we like the grid we like uh, polar tracking we like object snapping we like the different layers layers are important we learned how to create some text we learned how to create lines construction line array we learned how to save it we learned how to pan we learned how to zoom in and out if i was in your shoes what would i do i would close down autocad i would redo this entire um exercise again without my help see if you can do it again trust me um i'm gonna give myself a break now and if i'm in the mood i'm gonna make uh, I, I will be making lesson number two what's lesson number two going to be we're going to move on to this and we're kind of going kind of going go over the same stuff as before okay this is an orthographic projection of a front view and a top view what this is this is some sort of v block that allows you to clamp cylinders and things like that that's it don't be um a cad snob if you're good at solidworks and you're good at inventor don't assume that you can just pick up you, autocad is a good skill to have okay trust me on that i'll see you i'll see you again